Vern Lundquist, one of the voices I've always appreciated and enjoyed listening to for the last, I mean, I'm 44. I feel like I've been listening to Vern my entire life. So, Vern, thanks for being with us. How you doing? I have been around your entire life, as a matter of fact. <laughs> so that's true. I have been listening to you. Uh, well, I appreciate that very much. I'm doing great, guys. It's, uh, it's snowing in Steamboat Springs, Colorado, and that's good for a ski resort. So I am sure you're going to be watching college football tomorrow. Every Saturday, you're the voice of the, the game of the week on CBS in the SEC. Alabama, one of the final four teams. Do you believe they are the best of those four teams? Well, it's, it's tough to judge, and, and I say it in this context. Uh, we're on the air every Saturday afternoon at 3.30, and other games are being played. And so I haven't seen that much of Michigan State. I haven't seen that much of Oklahoma or Clemson. And uh, so my eyeballs have rested seven different times this year on Alabama. Uh, they have improved every week. Uh, they've got one of the best defensive front sevens that I've seen in the last decade or so. So I, I know mo so much more about them. It's, it's really, uh, I feel this is stupid to say, but as a, as a college football broadcaster, I'm kind of unqualified to talk a little bit about what the other teams have done. I understand. Yeah, yeah Vern, I, I, I'm going to pepper you with questions just about your career and history. I, I just find it fascinating to get a chance to talk with someone like you. Favorite place to call an event? Oh, wow. I'm not messing around. Uh, I wouldn't say Minot, uh, North Dakota, South <laughs> Fargo, no. Uh, favorite place? Well, I, let, let's just reduce it. Well, no, no, no. Let's not reduce it at all. Augusta in April. There you go. And that's uh, – I wanted to ask about Augusta because 1986, one of the greatest uh, sporting hours of TV of my life, watching Jack Nicholas on the back nine come back and win it. And – it's right up there to me with Al Michaels, Do You Believe in Miracles, when Jack rolled that putt, I believe on 16, and all you did, you said, maybe, maybe, and then you came in with the emphatic, yes, sir. And I remember that so well, and I, I think it is my favorite call. Is, is that, a, if someone, if you're not there, and someone asks, hey, what's your favorite call of Vern Lundquist, should that be at the top of the list? Well, uh, I, I'll be self-deprecating. Gosh, I'm pawing my feet here. Can you tell? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's my favorite moment. It really is. It's my default position. Uh, I, I think, uh, in part, just as you said, I was there, and, and that four hours on Sunday afternoon remains, uh, almost 30 years later, uh, my favorite day in sports. I just, everything was electric about it. And you know, no one expected much from Jack. And then all of a sudden he puts together a 30 on the back nine. And, and uh, there's, there's a classic story that we tell amongst ourselves. Lance Barrow, who is now the coordinating producer of golf and, and the NFL, was then an AD, an assistant director. So he's queuing up replays and, and hollering at Frank Cherkinian, who's the lead producer. And, and he said, and Frank was a little five foot four inch. Armenian that we lovingly called uh, the, the Ayatollah. Uh, and, and Lance said, uh, Frank, we've got Jack Nicholas with a birdie on nine. And Frank turned around to Lance and he said, Lance, you got to learn how to produce. Jack Nicholas is not part of this story. Wow. And then, of course, he birdied 10 and Frank got interested and uh, we, we showed every shot after that. But it was such a great day, and, and, and I, let's face it, it was Jack Nicholas. If Tom Kite makes that putt in 17, uh, maybe yes, sir, is uh, lost, to, lost in the clouds. But it was Jack, and that's what made it special. Vern, I'm curious, how often does someone bring up a, one of your calls, and does it ever get annoying? I mean, I feel like 20 times a day, there'd be people like Paul coming up to you and being like, hey, remember <laughs> at the Masters in 86 <laughs> when you said yes, sir? That was awesome. No, it's not annoying at all. Uh, it, it's, to me, it's a manner of, uh, of acknowledgement of, of one of the highlights of my life and that people enjoy that. And, and share in it uh, is just great. I, I hear that one a lot. Uh, the Tiger Woods chip in, I hear that a lot. Uh, I, I, just an interesting, I hope it's an interesting anecdote. Pat Hayden, 
the athletic director at, at USC is a dear, dear friend. and We worked together for three years doing the NFL back in the 90s. And Pat told me after, after the Nicholas thing, I mean, this goes way back, that when he and his friends would be playing, anybody made anything more than a 12-foot putt. The immediate thing was, yes, sir. <laughs> right. And so, I mean, I, I take that. Uh, I, I rather enjoy it. It's a lot better than saying, who the hell is Happy Gilmore? <laughs> right. <laughs> hey, I, uh, I I dabble a little bit in the in the football play by play, Vern, and I know Al Michaels a little. Read his book, and the piece of advice that stands out, I believe, from his book, he said, "You know what? I just always try to make sure that my voice and my call matches the tone of of the crowd in the stands. It should match how they're feeling and how they're reacting to the action." What What's one piece of advice you would give about the way you've learned to call a game or an event that? Um, People, as I say, dabbling in it, should think about and remember. Well, I would say this, and I learned this uh, probably from from two legends in 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 this craft, uh, Ray Scott, who many people don't remember because he died quite some years ago, but he was the voice of the Green Bay Packers, and he did the first two Super Bowls for CBS, and Pat Summerall, and that is uh, there's a lot of value in silence. And you, you don't ever try to talk over the crowd. I mean, uh, if something spectacular happens, you hope that your description of it uh, matches the uh, the uh, achievement on the field, and you hope that you there's a uh, just a hint of eloquence to it. Uh, but but I think that the value of laying out is something that we we just uh, a, lo- a lot of folks don't practice. And there's so much. Uh, let me give you my favorite example. Uh, Gary Danielson and I did the Iron Bowl, the the, uh, the game in which Chris Davis returned the missed field goal 109 yards. And I, because I've seen it so many times, I finally just I, I put a stopwatch on it. And after Chris Davis goes into the end zone, Gary and I shut up, and we didn't speak for a minute and 21 seconds. Wow. And during that minute and 21 seconds, our director, who should have won an Emmy and didn't, uh, Steve Milton, made 21 camera cuts, 21, in a minute and 21 seconds. And it documented the game visually and memorably in a way that I think, you know, oh, boy, that was a really good run, uh, would never have, have, have uh, fit the, the, the moment. Uh, so I'm... Uh, Ben Scully is the master of it, uh, and and I think Al is too. Al Al has a sense of letting the pictures uh, to tell the story in addition to to the audio compliment. Vern, is there any other event you've done that has sort of the passion and the intensity of these SEC games and the SEC fans? Uh, honestly, no. And and my life in the SEC is kind of a happy accident. Uh, I did the NFL forever and had a number of great partners. Uh, I, I was Terry Bradshaw's first partner back in the 80s. Uh, worked with Dan Fouts. And at the time the switch was made to put me into the SEC, I was doing the number two NFL game with Dan Deardorff. And life's pretty good, you know. Uh, there, there are a lot of nice hotels in the NFL. <laughs> I'm not saying they're not in Tuscaloosa. <laughs> you get my drift. Yep. Uh, uh, and 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 I was very comfortable, and I, I kept hearing rumors that that uh, Dick Enberg might be making himself available. And I kept hearing this and reading about it in Rudy Marsky's column. And I finally called Sean McManus, and I said, "Is there any? This won't affect me, will it? What what's going on here?" And he uh, and and he and I've laughed about this many many times since. Sean is is my boss. He's the chairman of the sports division. And and not so coincidentally, Jim McKay's son, and uh, uh, Sean said, "Well, you know what? Enberg is a Hall of Fame broadcaster, and if he makes himself available, I have a, a responsibility to this division to talk with him." But he said, "Really, I just it's not going to happen. Uh, I can't. He's been 30 years at NBC. I cannot imagine he's coming over." Pause. Deep breath. And then he said. Now then, in the unlikely event that we sign Dick, how would you feel about doing the SEC on CBS? And I said the appropriate 
things, and I hung up the phone, and I looked at my wife, Nancy, and I said, pack your bags for Tuscaloosa. <laughs> and, of course, you know, by happy accident, and, and this is, who knew? Uh, this has been uh, uh, one of the great joys of my years. I've been at CBS now since 1982. And uh, these last 16, so half of them in the SEC. And, if, you know, we do a national telecast of what is essentially a regional sport. And I think the ascendancy and excellence of the SEC, concurrent with the way we present the game, has, uh, has given a lot of luster to the SEC. Not so much in the last two years, but when you win seven national titles in a row as they did, uh, there's a lot of attention being paid to that product around the country. Well, Vern, every now and then I, I have this feeling that I must be doing something kind of right in this business, and having your voice on the other end of the line is one of those moments. So very enjoyable, very cool to have a conversation with you. We really appreciate you making time for us. Thank you, guys. It was very enjoyable, and Happy New Year to you. All right. As to you, that's Vern Lundquist of CBS Sports. Been there since 1982.